Things have escalated quickly, publishers have pulled out, games have been pulled, prices have begun to fluctuate, and it's become increasingly clear that while Epic might have been onto something with their sale, they clearly did not communicate that with their partners, something that has led to a mightily confusing situation overall. Hey everyone and welcome back to another industry report, the almost daily series where we go behind the headlines and try to work out what's going on. Today we've got something that's really just quite bizarre surrounding the Epic game Mega Sale. Now, as crazy as it sounds, it seems like Epic didn't really let their publishing partners properly know what was going on in advance, for we've seen a number of very confusing situations as games are pulled and we've even had strange pricing or even sales being added to games after the fact. Overall, Epic seemed to be pretty damn chaotic indeed. So when I covered Hades yesterday, it was discounted a total of 65% down to only $6.99 but it ended up selling then for $9.99, then $14.99, and then down to $9.99 again. So just what the hell happened? Why was the price going all over the place? Well, the game initially had a base price of $19.99, and it was then discounted by Supergiant initially, and then it had Epic's $10 discount applied, giving us that initial $6.99 price point. Well, it seems like that was too much, as they then increased the base price to $24.99, with Epic's uh, sale then bringing it down to $14.99. This meant that the discount would cost Supergiant nothing as the $10 was uh, covered by Epic. Now, on Supergiant's Discord server, they claimed that this was because the game had since been updated with a new biome, new voice characters, bosses, and a bunch more, and that they felt like $24.99 uh, as a base price really reflected the value of their game. Now, the timing of that is a little bit odd for a few reasons. First, in some countries, it's actually actually kind of illegal to jack up the base price of something in order to make a sale look deeper than it is, so even if their reasoning is spot on, that bit is rather dubious. I mean, it could be seen as being a little bit sneaky, actually at the expense of Epic. Why? Well, you got to remember just how crazy the Epic Mega Sale is. On a Steam sale, if a developer discounts their game by 75%, well, then they just earn 75% less. But on the Epic Mega Sale, well, Epic Games are discounting games over $13.99, I believe, by $10. Uh, but they're paying that $10, or £10, or your regional equivalent. So, if a developer discounted their $20 game to $15, then Epic would sell the game for $5, but the developer would still get $15. Of course, minus any applicable store cuts, of course. And that's what makes the Supergiant situation kind of interesting. They hiked up the price of their game by $5, and then they removed their discount. This meant that the game would have been selling at $14.99 because of Epic's sale, but they would still be getting an extra $5, even though their sale price would have went down because they were pretty much gaming how the sale was working. Uh, so yeah, they were trying to get another five bucks per sale knowing that Epic's uh, $10 was already a pretty decent thing that customers would see. Is that a bit shady? Yeah, it could be. Did people notice? Yes, they did. Supergiant have since reset the game's price to its usual $19.99 and have then removed the sale on their end, meaning that the game now retails for $9.99 with Supergiant, of course, taking $19.99 for each sale because it's fully leveraging Epic's mega sale um, and how it works strange moves and it's worth noting that they've actually said they will increase the price of the um, of the game up to 24.99 again once the epic sale ends and this could further be seen as being a little bit shady because you know sale event happens it's all being covered by epic financially and they're saying hey you know you could use uh, use the sale now if you don't, we're going to increase the price, uh, you know, after the sale, and it's not like the sale costs us any money, because Epic's paying for the whole thing. So yeah, it is quite an odd situation. Overall, it is super giant, pretty much gaming the system as hard as they can, a little bit dubious with the fluctuations, and I mean, there's a part of me that kind of can't blame them for making the best out of this situation and the mechanics at work, but also, I mean, they're obviously... They've been a little bit sloppy about it, let's just say. But as it turns out, sloppy communications, really, that's the phrase of the day, because we've seen more strange things happen to more games. So initially, this is a good one, Metro Exodus was not discounted by its publisher. Its base price was $49.99 in the UK, so $49.99, uh, you know, British sterling. It then went down to $39.99 with Epic's discount. Well, since then, the game's price base has been slashed to $37.49, meaning you actually purchase it for $27.49. Now, what's odd is that kind of means the publisher wasn't aware of the Epic Mega Sale. I find that hard to believe. So it might have just been poor coordination or the sale being activated maybe earlier than the publisher expected, but this is actually an example of the sale seemingly accidentally not being used by its publisher initially. Uh, hopefully, of course, 
uh, customers who purchased it at the initial sale price before the publisher were aware and then decided to do their own discount. Hopefully they'll be refunded the difference out of goodwill if they raise it with Epic. There are of course though examples of it going in the other way. Games like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 were up for pre-order, meaning that they were discounted by Epic as a part of the mega sale. But it turns out Paradox were not okay with this. Why? Well, you could pre-order their game for £10 off or $10 off yesterday. You could, um, you could do that. But if you go there today, the page 404 is because, yes, Paradox pulled Vampire from the Epic Games Store because of this. Yeah, they, they didn't just opt out of the sale. They pulled the game from the store. Now, when asked about this, Epic said that it's on publishers whether they want to participate in the sales or not. Their rep then went on to say that Paradox were notified in advance, but he then retracted that statement after being made aware that actually they had not been briefed in the sale. Yeah. I mean, mad. But still, even with that, it wasn't a case of them opting out. It was them literally pulling it uh, from Epic. But uh, they did say to Kotaku later on that the game would be brought back to the Epic store and that um, anything, you know, any of the discounted purchases will still be honored. Uh, but of course, Paradox would say that because, let's be real, it was Epic's money anyway. So that was a really strange situation. Then something similar has seemingly happened to Oxygen Not Included, though we don't know if it's for the exact same reason. That's just another game that has seemingly been pulled from the Epic Epic store. So what's clear to me here is that regardless of what publishers really wanted or anything like that, the Epic Mega Sale discount was pretty much blanket applied. Epic do not seem to have communicated this stuff well with their publishing partners, and that seems to have led to post-sale launch confusion. I mean, there are just some strange situations. There's some games that discounted themselves below the threshold at which Epic would have discounted them by $10. So as an example, if your game retailed uh, for $14.99, but you discounted it to $11.99, then Epic wouldn't cover anything because it's below Epic's threshold. And again, it all just comes down to tremendously messy messaging where key partners like Paradox were seemingly just not made aware. And then past that, I actually saw some users reporting that they purchased multiple games in a row only to have their account suspended by the store's anti-fraud system. Now, this cannot be verified. People did say that their issues were resolved by customer support, but it's kind of funny because it would not have happened if the Epic game store, you know, had a multiple item basket. Because yeah, right now, if you want to buy five games, that's five separate purchases, five, you know, separate times, you got to go through the whole checkout process, which is just a bit dumb. Now, here's a weird angle to this. So you might be wondering why a publisher would not be happy to sell their game at a $10 discount when they don't even have to lose those $10 because Epic are covering the $10, right? The Epic sale really is generous towards both developers and players. So just what the hell gives here? Well, much of it is about perceived value. You see, the higher price something is, the more people will think it is worth. That's just a documented thing in human psychology. And you might disagree. You might think, oh, just because a game is expensive doesn't mean I think it's worth more. But I'd like to point out that when a game like Anthem or Fallout 76 fails, well, why does everyone like immediately highlight any price discounts or fire sales. It's because we think the game's bad quality. We think it's low value. We think the initial sale price is beyond what the game is worth. So if the price decreases or maybe, you know, you get a free copy of Fallout 76 along with a game controller add-on, well, that's pretty much the market acknowledging our low perception of the game's value through pricing. And that's why we laugh at a game getting bad reviews and then having its price be slashed. That thing cuts both ways. If a game has its price cut by $10, even if it's at no cost to the developer or publisher, it's still, from the mind of the publisher, and really it still will, decrease the perceived value of that game. Knowing that Hades was on sale for like, you know, $6.99 instead of $24.99, it does make the $24.99 from what comes out of your wallet seem a little bit silly, doesn't it? So for a publisher, they're probably not going to want that to happen too much pre-launch. Then past that, it's also harder to provide an eye-grabbing sale of a game if the launch price is discounted through something like this, so especially with the pre-orders. That's why games generally launch with a fairly high price. It's so they can get as many sales as they can from the most dedicated fans at the higher price, and then they'll progressively lower their prices through sale events, ideally, you know, kind of getting that curve where you're always selling copies, um, you know, to people at the highest price that person is willing to pay. And... I mean, really, that's just selling a product 
for what people think it's worth. That's actually not an evil, weird thing. So for Paradox of Vampire 2, it seems like that $10 sales price just probably wasn't worth it to them because of this factor and the perceived value. And I know that's an odd angle for me to take in this video. It's an odd thing to bring up. Um, I do that because I think it's something that customers don't normally have to think about and really shouldn't have to think about. But I think it is an important thing for customers to understand because ultimately it's a big consideration from publishers and they are the people from whom we purchase games. So my overall take on this is basically epic or messy, structurally so. They bungle up everything. I still think this is a great sale. I think that Epic's $10 move or £10 move, whatever the regional equivalent is. I think that's fantastic for customers, right? Everyone's getting games for cheaper, but it's also fantastic for the developers because the developers aren't losing out, right? They're getting that $10 covered for them. It's a pretty crazy type of sale. It's obviously one that's only possible because of the massive cash reserves that Epic clearly must have, but it certainly is the right form of competition. It is competition by, you know, a, a better, I guess a better like value proposition to the customer. You're getting the same game, you're getting at a lower price. And if you also care about the developer or publisher getting, you know, more from the thing that they've made, then I suppose that's an added bonus. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't really absolve Epic from doing the exclusives. I'm not going to forget that. I do not like that. I will continue to not support that. But I think just it's an interesting situation how they do this big sale and then turns out they've not communicated with a lot of their publishing partners. We got prices ping pong just all over the place. It's just a really interesting uh, case of e-commerce, isn't it? So let me know what you think. Be sure to check out today's other video, which is an episode of The Roundup. And with that, I will see you next time.